Hello and welcome to the Crown Hills Kitchen. Today we are going to be making pizza. Now, first of all, before we start anything, same as usual, we're going to wipe down with our disinfectant spray, make sure there's no germs or bacteria that can contaminate our food. Make that nice and clean because we actually need this table surface to knead our dough for the pizza. Okay, I'll explain a bit more about that later. Okay, so I have here some strong bread flour. Strong flour has got a higher gluten content and I'll explain why that's important in just a moment. What I'm going to add to my flour is a half a teaspoon of salt. That's going to enhance the flavour of our dough. Make sure that it is a level teaspoon. Just use your finger and pop that to one side. Try not to get the yeast mixed in with the salt because yeast and salt don't like each other very much. Yeast, we're going to have a teaspoon of yeast. Again, make sure it's nice and flat. I usually put that on the opposite side of where I put the salt so the two are not mixing because the salt, like I say, they don't like each other. Salt kills the yeast, stops it working quite so well. What yeast does like though is sugar, that's food for yeast and it helps it to work and ferment. So I'm just going to put half a teaspoon in with the yeast and that will give it the food that it needs. Yeast is actually a live organism um, and it needs the same sort of things that we need as human beings. It needs heat, it needs time to be able to grow and ferment, it needs food which is the sugar. Okay, so we're going to provide the correct environment for the yeast to be actually active and doing its job, fermenting. When it's fermenting, it's actually releasing the CO2, the carbon dioxide that it contains. Um, it's a byproduct of the actual um, fermentation process that's going on. Okay, I'm going to make a little well in the middle, like so. And I'm going to add in almost all of my water. Okay, it's nice and warm, so that's providing the warmth that yeast needs. You need warmth, the yeast needs warmth. If it's too hot, it's going to kill your yeast, same as it would do for us if the environment is too hot. And if it's too cold, it means the yeast has to work harder to actually produce the amount of CO2 that we need to create the bubbles in our dough when it's cooking. Okay, I'm putting most of that in. Butter knife. We're just going to bring those ingredients together, nice big circles and already I can tell I need a little bit more water than what I have. I'm going to put again most of it but I'm just going to leave a little bit at the bottom. If we pour too much water in then um, we can add a little bit more flour to that. One thing that we do need to add is oil. Okay, in there. I should really have added that before I started bringing all the ingredients together, but it's not too late. We'll bring all of this together to form our dough. And when it gets to the point where it's all sticking, starting to come together and sticking to your knife like this, clear off your knife. We're going to get our hands in there now and bring it all together. Okay, it's nice and warm. Press and squeeze your dough together and rub it round the sides of your bowl. Try and incorporate all those little crumbs and bits together. Okay, and your bowl should really almost be clean if you've been doing this and getting the quantities of liquid and stuff right. You should be able to almost clean your bowl. Okay, so we're ready for the next bit. Okay, you can see that the bowl is almost clean. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my surface so it doesn't stick. And what we're going to be doing now is kneading. Okay, to knead, this is the way I've been taught. I know there are other methods, but my favorite way is this. You're going to bring the back part towards you. You're using the palm of your hand here. You're going to push away from you, down and away, okay? Once we've done that, we need to then give it a quarter turn. The reason for that is if you're only doing this, as you can see, the side bits here don't get stretched. 
What that stretching is doing is the glutens are actually in the flour are being developed and stretched. They actually then provide like an elastic reaction. We call it elasticity within the bread and that elasticity then provides a really good structure for your bread when it's cooking. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're stretching the glutens in the bread. We actually want to do this for about 10 minutes. And what we're looking for is for you to develop a really nice, smooth surface. And to check that it's actually done, if you put your finger in there, and that bounces back up, you know that you have the right amount of elasticity and the, the glutens in the structure there are working really well. At the minute you can see that hole is still there, so I need to continue to do a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to continue with the kneading. And when we've done our 10 minutes of kneading, what we're going to be doing then is popping our little ball of dough into the bowl. We're then going to wrap some cling film over the bowl. Make sure it's nice and tight and then we need that to rest or prove in a warm area allowing the yeast to develop that CO2 that's going to create the bubbles in our bread. Okay, so now my dough is approved and you can see that it's nice, it's soft, it's warm. We're going to tease that out of the bowl. Let's see if I put my finger in, it starts to raise back up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on the work surface. Let's get rid of these. And I'm going to roll that out. Put a little bit of flour on the top, don't over flour because we don't want the uh, dough to go hard. Okay, so we're going to roll away and towards, and then we need to give that a quarter of a turn, okay? So that we're getting, keeping that nice round circular shape. Away and towards, quarter of a turn. Don't try, don't do this because you'll end up with two fat bits at the top and the bottom and very thin bits in the middle. So you want to roll away and towards and then turn, okay? You will find that as you are um, rolling, you'll probably see that your dough, you've stretched it and then you'll see it squishing back in. That's the elasticity in the glutens working in your pizza. You know that's a good dough. Okay, so we'll do that. We're nearly there. Do one more. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, it's very important that you do this. I've made this mistake once before, put my toppings on and then realize I haven't put it on my tray. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put it. We've got a piece of baking parchment on the tray. We're going to lift this, put it on there use the rolling pin to do it so that we don't tear the, the dough at all. To do this I'm going to put my rolling pin on the back edge, lift up your dough and then just roll it onto your rolling pin and lift. Okay, that then allows you to just roll that straight onto your parchment paper, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so all we need to do now is put our passata on there, Whatever toppings you want, if you remember if you want to use any kind of meats, they must be already cooked because it's only going to be in the oven about 20 minutes, okay? So you could have, um, like I said, any kind of vegetables on your meat. I usually put about two tablespoons of, of uh, passata, spread that around towards the edge, okay? Don't go right to the edge. The reason we leave an edge is because traditionally pizza is made, it's like what people would take for pat lunch. It's uh, something that you hold, like a bit of like a sandwich if you like, an open sandwich. Uh, and that pizza allows you to, the, the crust on the pizza allows you to hold it while you're eating it, even if your hands are dirty, and then you can just throw that crust bit away, okay? 
So there we have our passata on the bottom. I'm going to put some little pinch of Italian herbs on there just to give it a traditional type of flavour. And then I'm going to put, uh, we've got some peppers, some nice colourful peppers, some of our five a day. Think about you eat well plate, eat well guide should I say. And we'll put some onions on there. Can't wait till lunch time, this will be my dinner. Okay, so just roughly pop them on there. We don't want to overload. And then I'm going to finish off with the cheese. The reason I'm putting the cheese on last is because as the cheese is cooking, it will melt and it will almost seal those vegetables and things in place. So that when you do cut your pizza and you lift it up, all your toppings aren't falling out all over the place. It just helps to keep everything together. So just um, put your cheese, sprinkle it over the top like so. Now, if you don't like a lot of cheese, don't put a lot of cheese on. I like a lot of cheese. So I'm gonna probably put most of this on. Okay. And then just spread that out a little bit towards the edge. And as I say, any toppings you want on there, but if you're having meat, please make sure the meat is already cooked. Okay, so you could have, um, chicken tikka, you could have um, salami or pepperoni or anything like that. Any vegetables, mushrooms, whatever you want, sweet corn. Okay, so we're going to now pop this in the oven. Remember your oven has been on, so it's hot. So we're going to use our oven gloves. Open your oven and we're just going to pop that in. Top shelf in the center for about 20 minutes. Okay, and when that's cooked, um, I'll show you what it looks like.